and I have been asked a lot how to wash wool, how to wash fiber. Um, so I'm gonna do just a little uh, lesson here on how to do so. And laid out, I have varying types of fiber so that all can see how they respond differently to the, the scour agent we are gonna be using, um, how much of the soap to use and and just a, a, an easy peasy way to do it and so i i will start right here this is this is wool and this is a wool from a a, a mutt sheep that is a a combination of icelandic there's some shetland some romney in it and and some bfl so you can see it has some of the curly tips of the bfl and it's just it's got nice staple length and 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 just a kind of a medium a medium grade fineness wool here and all these fibers have been skirted and picked through and if anyone is interested we can sure do a another lesson on on skirting fleeces at a different time but these are all ready to go so here we have this mud herd and then here we have some romney this is a, a beautiful beautiful length it, it's it's got nice soft waved crimping to it and it's a beautiful beautiful color so we'll wash the romney and then here we have a real fine breed this is um cormo and you can see the the crimping here it's very close together very tightly close together um signifies a very fine wool and that's what this is this on um, this is the same cormo now this is what the the shepherd uses to mark the sheep. Oftentimes they'll use a, a, a type of paint and it's supposed to wash out. Sometimes it washes out beautifully and sometimes I think they use spray paint and, 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 and it doesn't. But we'll see how this one, how this one does. But if you, if you buy a fleece or, or you get a fleece from someone and it has this paint on it, that, that's why it, it does. So that they can mark their sheep so that they can tell at a, at a quick glance which are the boys which are the girls and so on and so forth and now here is an example this is um some tease water locks now you can see the deep the dark yellowing of of these of, of these locks and, and they're, they're quite felted together the other side this is this is the side that sat right on the animal and then these are the locks that that were on the outside and they're quite dirty and this yellowing indicates that this is this has been sitting this wool has been sitting for a while probably three years or so and it, it's really yellowed now we're going to see generally you you can't get you can lighten this yellowing but generally you can't get it back to a pure white wool but we'll see how this responds um this is that same lox I, we pulled it apart and and we'll wash those up this is this is a a lincoln wool that has sat for three years and it it has there again also has yellowed a little bit so so we'll see how that responds and if that lightens up to white and we'll go over here to our non-greasy fibers and this is mohair this comes from an angora goat and Gora fiber comes from an Angora rabbit, whereas mohair you get from an Angora goat. And there again, we will wash these and, and see how this, this, this washes up. Now, all of these fibers, we are going to use half the amount of the soap as we use with the greasy wools and, and less soak time. We do an extra soak on the wool, whereas we won't with the with the camel and, and and the goat. Now this right here is Surrey alpaca. Um, Surrey alpaca and Wakaya alpaca are the two different kinds of, of alpaca. This Surrey is, is, grows very straight. It's got no crimping to it. It's very shiny. It's very slippery as opposed to the Wakaya alpaca, which is right here. And you can see this actually has some some light crimping to it and it, it's fluffier when it grows on the animal it grows more like an afro whereas this is just going to hang like a wet mop like dreadlocks on on the alpaca and that's the two different kinds of of alpaca fiber and then we have llama here and this is a beautiful llama fiber here and llama has guard hairs in it generally and you can see them right here and you can just pick them out 
um, and then it's then it's gone, and and then you're just left with that nice, super soft um, down underneath it, very similar to Wakai alpaca underneath it, and we'll wash up some some of this llama too, and we'll we just leave the guard hairs in it, and at the mill here through the carding process, the carter kicks out these long, coarser guard hairs for us, so we don't have to sit here and 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 do that. And now we will start bagging them up, and 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 start the process here. All right, we're gonna load our bags up here now. And if you just go to Walmart, Target, and just get a laundry bag with the holes, it makes it so much easier for rinsing and for soaking, and you don't end up with fiber soup, which is, which is much easier. And, and I, just, I just take a handful, um, one to two pounds, depending upon levels of grease, and we'll, we'll do that much, maybe a little more. In here. And that's this one, and then we'll do the Romney. This apart. And we're gonna be using, the only thing I use is a product by Organic Dyes called Echo Scour WA305. And it's, it's an amazing, amazing product that just melts the grease off of your greasiest wools. And you can wash baby alpaca in it. It's, it's just, or you can even wash your skeins in it after after you're done. It, it's an amazing product. We actually sell it. Um, okay, we have it in three different sizes. Um, if you're interested, we would love to love to help you out with that. But you can sure use Dawn Works, um, Tide Works, and. Folks have, have washed with all different things. There's all different ways of washing, but to truly do the best amount, the best job possible is using um, something like Echo Scour, uh, a good scouring agent that that you don't have to worry about felting the fiber then, that, that the soap, the, the scouring agent does the work for you. Um, I'm gonna just shove these right in one bag. Well, I think I'm gonna put this little bit, being it's a different type in a different bag. Okay, and now we'll take our bags and we'll go over here to our wash basins here. Put these down. And using Echo Scour, I'm going to give you the directions using Echo Scour because that's, that's what I use. Um, you don't need 170 degree water, you need just the hottest tap water um, your water heater will give you. Just let that, let that get hot. And then, these are walls. So I'm gonna use two tablespoons, and I have this handy little measuring. And we'll just dump in two tablespoons per bag here. And most folks don't have big stainless steel wonderful sinks like this. So I'm also gonna wash them in a tub like this that you can do, because some folks don't like to wash wool in their sinks at home, so you can sure use a tub or a bin, um, a bucket, you know, whatever, whatever you want. You can also use some in that, and same results. And it, it'll suds up a little bit. It's got a, a, a little bit of a, a, a secret uh, scent to it. And I use this a giant uh, potato masher, and I just push it down, push the fiber down into the water. Now, doing this, you're not going to felt anything. It's fine. Um, folks, when they're when they're washing wool themselves, they're so concerned about felting it. And how you're going to felt it is if I took this and stirred it around in here and agitated it that way. As long as you're just going up and down and just pressing it down into the water you're fine. I've been doing this for almost 10 years and I haven't felt it yet, so we're willing. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're filling your your basin, don't let the water run onto your bag with the wool in it. You want to let it fill first and then push the fiber down into the into the water. 
And this water is probably, it averages about between 140 and 160 is what I get out of my, my water heater. And if you look here, you can see how it's, it's already, the water is, you can see the lanolin melting off of the fiber already. And in this one, we will put the, the felted, extremely dirty teased water locks and, and, and see what, see how they come out. And then the, the older Lincoln. anything to push the fiber down and you know a spoon or a, a, a anything but potato mashers sure were good <laughs> and then now we are going to let it soak for 20 minutes and while that is soaking we are going to we'll bake up our papa, mama here, and mo here. If you want, you can, you know, go ahead and pull, you know, the, the fibers apart. That that can help in cleaning. But the soap works so well that that, that I, I generally don't do that. <laughs> this. Um, Surrey alpaca is notorious for, for holding together like this, so we'll just pull that apart a little bit. Add in a bag. Now we have the kaya. Be the next one that'll, that'll dive in the wash. Now we are going to do the first rinse, and you can see the water how how everything is just melted beautifully off. And then what I do is I just gently, gently press. There again, you don't want to go sideways. You don't want to rub, you just want to press straight in. And we're going to drain, drain these tubs and we're going to fill them again with, and we're going to fill with just water and some are going to put a little bit more soap in those, those locks that, that are so dirty and, and, and so yellow. We're going to try just a probably a teaspoon more of soap with that second soap to see if that'll help help get it get it clean so I'll just put I'll just put a teaspoon into that one and that's that's in this bucket here so are going to go in here. Oh, well, I'm surprised. Remember how yellow that was? This 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 is scoured very nicely. Um, I'm surprised it got this this white already. That's that's surprising. And now this 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 was the. This, this, see the, see the yellowing? This was the one that, that, that was really bad. Um, we'll see if a second soap will, will do a little more. But, but not, not too bad, all things considered there. The rest of the batches will not get any soap in the water. It'll just be a, a, another 20 minute hot water soap. 
now we're going to rinse. We're on the final rinse. We'll go ahead and drain. Whoa, not much in that bag. Great Congo parrot that is trying to get his two cents of <laughs> into the lesson. So that's the chattering you hear in the background. Okay, now we'll rinse. And then you rinse until until the water runs clear, but as you can see, the water is clear. It's just that, that little bit of rinsing. That's all, that's all that needs to be done. And then I'm throwing it into this washing machine and all it's going to do is spin out the excess, the excess water so that it dries quicker. And you can sure do that at home also. If you didn't want to use your dryer, you could lay it out um, on, on, a sh on, on something, uh, wire, uh, a grid, anything that allows air to circulate on both sides. Um, these are homemade. These are super easy to make with PVC and just, um, um, this is this is plastic fencing used to go around a garden that you can get in any Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards in their landscaping area, their garden area. And just use zip ties to put it on and it works great. Um, and it works great for skirting also. And you and then put a fan on it. That's that that'll speed up drawing too. Fan running on it. And that's it. Now and I let it spin for 30, 45 seconds. That's all that's needed to get that that excess liquid out of there. Okay, now we're going to wash our mohair and our alpaca and our llama. So with that, again, we're only using one tablespoon, half of what we use for, for the wool. Because the camelid and the mohair, the goat, um, bison, camel, um, yak, they don't have lanolin. They doesn't have the grease like wool has that you need the extra scouring agent in there to really melt that grease away and these guys will require more rinsing because there's dirt and dust. Alpacas love to take dust baths so they roll in the, in the dust a lot and so it, it will require more rinsing that you will see than the wool did. There again we'll just pop this in same manner and this will soak for 20 minutes just like we did the wool and when we are done we will go ahead and just rinse directly after that we won't wait another we won't do another soak with with these fibers all right now it's time for the reveal here we'll start down here this is our this is our mutt sheep and it's a nice gray color. It looks kind of oatmeal-y, and, and it's a very, very nice gray color. Now you'll see there's some um, some bits of, little bits of chaff and so on and so forth. Now in the carding process, those will all be kicked out, that those won't remain in there. Um, this is our Romney, our gray Romney. Feels wonderful, and this is greasy. Hard to tell the difference, but it, it feels, feels beautifully. This was a surprise to me because this, this wool has sat for three years and, and has gotten very yellow. Um, and I, I was surprised how well it turned out. I did not expect it to, to, to scour this white, um, but it did and, it, and it's, it's beautiful. Now this on the other hand, I'm guessing, I don't know how long this wool has been 
setting. I mean, you can actually see the lanolin is starting to collect and wax up on there. It's, it's pretty bad. So, you know, and then, and then on this side, the tips were, are just, they're just feel, they feel crusty. They feel kind of crunchy. Um, so if you're looking at fleeces to purchase and you see this color, do note that you are not going to get that fleece white when it's at that level of, of yellowing. Um, you can sure dye it and you're, and it's, it'll dye beautifully and that'll, you know, get rid of the yellowing. But if you are looking for white locks, you're not going to get that white. You're going to end up with this, but I mean, it, it's clean and it's, um, it did a, uh, a very good job on the dirt. If you can see, it did a very good job on the dirt. I'm impressed at how well it did on the dirt. It just doesn't, it just can't get that yellow out of there. Anyway, and then we have our Cormo and it did. It took all of the, the blue marking color out. It took that all out beautifully. And, and there, there it is. And you can see the tiny chaff in here. There again, that will come out in the carding process and it, it, it will be gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And those are our wools and that's, that's, and that's that. As you can see, I've laid them out on here. Now, um, they're, they're, they're not dripping. If they were dripping, I, I would put towels or something underneath her if, if you weren't able to spin out that excess liquid. Um, you can set them on a counter dripping wet. They're eventually gonna dry also. I mean, it's not, if, if you live in Arizona instead of North Dakota and at 30 below right now, um, it, it would, you put them outside if it's not a 40 mile an hour wind and in the sun and, and that can speak dry too. You can use a screen, you can use, you know, anything to lay out just to, to get that air circulation in there. Okay. Yeah, and now we'll see what our what our what our non-greasy fibers turn out like. Okay, now we're gonna rinse our alpaca and our mohair and our llama. And we do it the same way we did the wool. And you can see how, how dirty the water is. to drain that and refill it again and then rinse again until it's it's fairly clean like this I'm gonna call this good water is still pretty pretty clear so we'll put that to spin it out and then we'll I'll use this same water to do the first rinse of this one before I drain it Go ahead and drain this out. Back to fill up. And we'll do it 
final rinse on this, and that should call it good then. Okay, now we have our, we just spun them out in the, in the wash machine and just dumped them out here, and this is our mohair. And this is what it looked like before, and here is what it looked like now. This is our wakaya alpaca, and that turned out beautiful. This is our llama, and that turned out beautiful. I don't have the dirty up here because it, 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 it's kind of like the, the dark gray Romney. You can't really tell the difference. Um, and this is the Surrey. Now, one thing about Surrey alpaca is it always requires a second wash because Surrey, the, the, the locks, they stay together so much that you the, the, nothing penetrates them without literally opening them up like this and then rewashing it. And in our mill, we charge more for processing Surrey for that reason. It just requires more work. So you can see the dirt that's still hidden in these, in these locks. So this will go ahead, I will go ahead and put this back in the bag after I've gone through and opened it up and then put another, oh, probably almost a teaspoon and a half, almost a tablespoon in and then just rewash it. And then it'll be beautiful and wonderful and all will be well. Um, yeah, and that's it. And that, and again, all the fiber was washed in Echo Scour WA305, a completely safe, wonderful scouring agent. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful product. I would wash, I would use nothing else for washing. And, and we do sell it, so it's available 16 ounce, 32 ounce, and a gallon. And you can purchase it on the Bear Creek Felting website or the Gnome Schoolhouse website, which the Gnome Schoolhouse is a fiber resort like none other. And we welcome you to come and stay with us and see the mill for yourself and, and wash with us perhaps or attend a, a class or a retreat. And we're gonna have B&B runs and on-site catering events and retail store and you know, it, it's just gonna be amazing. And fiber animals out back, well, a big old barn back there that will have um, a variety of fiber animals you can, can meet and, and learn from also. So thanks so much for joining us.